we are here today in the offices of Brian Silcott, the Vice President of the Portland Lumberjacks. Obviously been a lot of news about the NLL lately the last month, and we're here to Brian talk about some of the results of what's been quite a tumultuous month for the National Lacrosse League. Um, tell us a little bit about what this last two weeks has been like for you. Um, it's been tough. I mean, I mean you know, and, and a lot of people around Portland know uh, that I love the game of lacrosse, and that's been the toughest thing about it is just the prospect of one, the players and owners not being able to get to agreements. Um, I've been on both sides of that, um, but also just being someone that, you know, obviously it's my job, but also I just really want to see games going on yeah, in the Rose Garden. Exactly. It's so much fun. It's so exciting. Um, and I think the NLL is a great thing for the growth of lacrosse throughout the U.S. and, and Canada as well. And to lose a season um, would have been, you know, fairly tragic. But I think that ultimately there wasn't a huge conflict between the athlete and the owner. Um, I think that there was, um, you know, maybe in, in a lack of communication between right. the, the, the players, um, the individual players, and their union leadership. Um, and so there was some misunderstanding about, you know, what was needed and what was wanted in order to make the season happen. Um, and I think that the cancellation of the season, in many ways, um, made some players realize that. You know, this is important to me, and I need to take a more active role in what's going on because there's people making determinations about my life, right. and I'm sitting silently in my living room. Um, so I think a lot of that happened. Hopefully, that's going to be a huge thing um, to, uh, as a benefit going forward. Um, but the greatest benefit that came out of this is that we were able to get a deal done that's good for everybody, really. Um, the, you know, the players are being taken care of in this deal. They're getting things they needed and wanted. Um, and the owners got a long-term deal. Long -term. There were some things that, that, that they didn't reach agreement about, um, but they did the smart thing with those things and said, hey, you know, we need to play lacrosse. Um, let's not sit here and bicker over these until it's right. too late to play. Let's just say we haven't made a decision yet. We're going to continue to talk about this and try to find a way to get these things worked out in the future. I think it was a, a great thing that the owners and the players both said, you know, we're not going to be stubborn here. We want to yeah. play lacrosse. You guys want us to play lacrosse. Let's get this done in a way that we can continue playing. Are we going to, you know, look bad that we said the season's canceled? Maybe, but we'd look a lot worse if we had, you know, players that couldn't pay their mortgage sure. and and uh, teams that had to drop out of the league. And we found the solution. Let's go forward with it. We'll take the hits for for making a mistake and, and go on. Well, were you surprised? I mean, the October 15th deadline was out there for quite some time, and you've been through this, as you said, as a player, and now on the other side. Were you surprised that? It it really came down to the fact they said, okay, this is it. Where in the past, it's, everyone seemed to be, you know, this happens every couple of years, and we'll get to quarter to 12, at midnight, we'll do a deal, we'll yeah. be on our way. And then this time they came through and said, no, we just can't do this anymore. Well, and I think that was the big thing, was that this time they said, we can't do this anymore. Right. And for the owners, it's, a, it's, a, it's one thing to have the instability of, of renegotiating the contract, but then worse than that, to have the negotiations go down to, you know, a week, days before the opening game, just puts you in, in an impossible situation. You know, Angela here is, is, you know, do I spend tons of money advertising the season that's not even going to happen? You know, it's not just endless dollars to make these things, make these things happen. So that the owner said, we need a deadline. You know, we have to, we have to have the, have the deal done by October 15th to give us a good window to go forward and spend the money on advertising and get everything ready and get visas for the Canadian players to come here. All that stuff costs money and we need the time to do it. On the flip side, the players are sitting back saying, yeah, they've given us dates before. Right. Yeah, oh yeah, you know, you know, before. And I don't think that, they, and they obviously didn't realize that. They were like, no, we have to do this. We yeah. have, this, is, this is a business decision we have to make. Um, and so the players just kind of sat back and, and let the union leaders do the, do the work for them and didn't really speak up at all right. about, you know, and it just kind of, sat there and the date came and went, they got canceled and all of a sudden everybody's like, whoa, yeah. wait a second, <laughs> what just happened? This time. What does the long-term deal open up for the league and for the Jacks in particular? What can you go after now? Um, kind of what it, what it, and I think it obviously it helps us just in terms of the stability and, and knowing that we're not going to have to do this. Knowing we can we can plan for the for the big picture and, and we can you know plan out advertising campaigns without ever having the fear that the season's going to get shut yeah. down. That's huge. Um, for the league, in terms of sponsorship deals, um, you know, TV, things like that, you know, when you're talking to those people, they look at your entire yeah. business. And, and, you know, the league's talking to a major sponsor. They're saying, you know, if I invest all this in a three-year deal with you 
and do all these things and gear up and put all of my efforts into being a partner with you for a three-year deal, and you guys might shut down after year one, why would I possibly do that? So now we have the stability to be able to say, the labor isn't an issue. That's not an issue here. We have players. They're, they're happy with the situation. We're happy with the situation. There's going to be a league for a long time yep. uh, to come here. So let's start working out deals for the longer term. Mm -hmm. Let's get to the important part. On the floor this year, yeah. what can we expect out of the Lumberjack? In terms of our, our team, you know, obviously Brody Merrill's going to be back. Yep. And uh, I think it was an under-appreciated uh, blow to our team last year that, uh, that Brody was hurt. And well, yeah, it was kept it was, quiet. There was a couple games that he actually missed, um, and the impact there is obvious. But the reality is that over the course of the season, he was playing hurt most of the season, and, and that really uh, it changes our team in terms of what he does on the floor, but also just the energy Sorry. and the, the the mood he sets on the field is is huge for us. Um, so I think that that having him back in great shape and ready to go and at the top of this game is going to be huge for us. And Coach Keenan is really putting together a group around him of, of great athletes that can get from the defensive end to the offensive end quickly and with the ability to, to, to score goals. You know, RP is back again, had his best year in indoor um, last year and has really yeah. um, committed himself to the indoor game. Yeah. Um, he really has, has, has taken a love to playing yeah. the indoor game, I think. Um, and really wants to be successful at it. When you know, when RP sets his mind yeah, to something, yeah. uh, good things usually happen. Um, so he'll be he'll be a huge factor. Dallas is going to be back yeah. again. Dallas, and you've probably seen him. He's in great shape. Yeah. He's really excited. He's engaged. He's in a great mood. Um, I think his life has really taken a, a turn. And, and in front when Dallas is happy and, and enjoying his life, he's a better yeah. he's a better goalie. Exactly. Um, and so I think he's got a lot of things. So that he's a he's a resident of Portland yeah. now. Um, and he's, he's getting married to Daria, and he's. He's gonna have a good year, I think. Good. Even though he's, I think, I think he's almost as old as me, but not quite. Yeah. He's, he's up there now. Athlete age is old, but for us, it's yeah. we're a long way to go, man. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Well, Brian, appreciate your time. Always good to see you. We're thrilled that the Jacks are back on the floor this year, and best of luck to you. Good to see you, man. Right, man. Take care.